So I'm going to do uh, a new tutorial on live code to Zojo. And this could even be called Zojo to live code, depending on what you want to use. So I'm going to take a look at the differences of live code and moving over to Zojo. And like I said, you can use it going the opposite direction if you like. Um, a thing that uh, <clears throat> they do in live code, they have a thing called carts. And what is a card? A card is basically a view controller. It's um, a way to have different views in a window. You can also do it with groups and hide groups and show groups, but the main way is by cards. So I'll start by just dragging some things out onto this window. Um, you know, just some buttons and whatnot, and maybe I'll throw a tab panel. You notice the tab panel is kind of a little screwy, but that's just the way it is. So, let's say we have this on our first window. Right now, there's only one card. So if I double click, right where I just double clicked, and in my screen capture software here on Mac, uh, it can show you where the click is at. Um, we can name this card. So I name it like something like CD uh, Main. And if I want a new card, I can go into this menu by hitting the right mouse button and say I want a new card, and it gives me a new view. And I can double click on this one again, and I can call this CD, oh no, we can just call it CD2. And say we want some other controls, let's say we put uh, another button up here, but maybe this time we want to put a text field. You know, just to sort of fill the screen. Uh, a thing that's on, uh, obviously, live code is the background of the window is default white. Uh, I'm going to change that so we can see what's going on here. So we can just go down to this property here. I'm going to hit the background. And I'm just going to choose the background of this default Mac window. And then it gets a gray. That way we can at least see what the controls are. So you can see that we have now uh, two cards. Let's add one more card so we'll have three cards. So I'll say new card. And let's say now that we add We'll add another button, and uh, let's see, let's just add a data grid. We won't put anything in it right now, but we'll just add it so you can see that you can change between the cards. Now, when you're in the IDE, if you hit uh, Command 3, you can flip between the cards. As you see up here in this title, it says Card Demo, and then it says 3. That tells you there's three cards. So if you don't add a title to your stack, you can see that. But if you add a title, so let's say we add a title here, that goes away. So in development, you probably should not add a title right away. So you can see that how many cards are there. Now you can uh, switch between cards in development mode by using command and one, two, and three. If you hit three, it flips through them like this. You can see stuff is not necessarily lined up right hit 2, it goes backwards in a descending order, and if you hit 1, it goes to the first card. And there are other series of numbers, but uh, Command 3 will flip through them. But how do you flip through them in code, right? In, in live code, when you launch this, and uh, if you click on this button, this is how you launch a uh, thing, how do I get through my cards? Well, you could basically, you have to program you want to go to the different cards. So we can have a button and we can put that button in the same location on every screen if we wanted to. And then we can say maybe next. We'll just say next for this particular thing and we we'll say button next card. So you can literally go go to card and the name of the card. However, you can also say go to next card. Oops. I didn't want to delete that though. So you can just say go to next card and you'll see if I apply that in the script it goes to the next card. So you can either select go to card and the card name or you can just say go to next card in your code. So you can add a button to every single one. 
and navigate to different cards. It's kind of a neat way of doing it. So you can see that you can move uh, through them when it's running. Obviously, you would lay this out uh, much better. Now, if you want to put different views, however, with inside of each window, you have to do so by grouping. So let's say if we had, we wanted to put several groups and say we want to put a couple of different things in this group. We would have to select the group and then group it. Lock it. And you also have to make It's the controls. If you want to show a border or not, you can do that here. You can so you can have a border sort of like it is in Zojo. Obviously, you have to resize it, and to do that, you have to unlock it. But you can have it so it either shows or hides a group, and you can have several of these groups uh, show or hide based upon code scripts. Okay, well, let's take a look at how you would do this in Zojo. What's the equivalent? So I have a project here and oops, that is the one for live code for Zojo. Okay, so I've added a window and made it the same size, 800 by 600. In Zojo, if you want to move between uh, multiple views without uh, a tab panel, you can use a thing called, and I'll just type the word panel in here, a page panel. However, you could use container control objects, but mainly you would use a page panel. And I have these controls here where you can fill it. The thing that's kind of neat about a page panel now, it's a, uh, a view controller, is you can have multiple page panels on a window and say like maybe the bottom half of the window might have a maybe different kind of control that might show up more times than not over your pages so you can switch multiple panels and uh, and you add your items like that and then you can lock them in place like such so uh, let's look at what a panel is here. We can edit, edit the panel by how many views it has. So it defaults to two. It starts with page zero and page one. So you can add, say, under a page. So you have three pages. And let's say we want to do this. And let's say this particular one only has two views. Um, you can name your panels. Like page panel main. And maybe this is... BP B main, or maybe it's called bottom, whatever you want to call it. And we can save that here. And you do the same thing, you can drop in your controls. So let's look at all the controls. So let's get off the filter. And again, let's say we want to add a button. Let's make it a generic button. And how will we add in the first one? We added a tab panel, which again is a tab panel is just like a page panel except for it has tabs in it. So maybe we have that on our first screen. And say on our second screen we have another button. We can align all these buttons up, of course, uh, by looking at the properties. But we're just going to throw some stuff in here kind of fill the area. So maybe we want to add oh uh, let's see what am I looking for? Let's say we add an image well something very simple here we can throw a picture in there or something. And let's say the third view has yet another button. And we can maybe just put a text area just to kind of fill her out. 
And again, we were going to do some things on these down here. So maybe we have some buttons down here. And then maybe on this one, we have a pop-up menu or something. I don't know why we would do that, but so you can see we could have that. And also, let's say, because this is a tab panel, I wonder if we want to put another in our page panel in here. And we want to switch between some more views, which we can do. We could. Um, you know, maybe we put a couple buttons here. Who knows why we're doing this? I'm just doing this kind of fast to show this off. No big whipty dipty. And so you can put multiple panels in there. Again, how would you uh, switch between them? Um, one way we could switch between them is by adding maybe a toolbar to the window. So let's look for a toolbar. And let's drag that here. <coughs> and where do we put our toolbar? Hello, did I not add it to the window? Let's add it over here. OK. So we have three views. Let's just say we have view one. View two, let's say we just want to call this TB1, let's add our picture, and let's call this TB2, again let's add another picture, and here we can make TB3, and let's choose a third picture. Okay, so really in our action event, all we have to do is say, hey, select case, item.name, and select case, case, case. And I believe we just said, what, TB1, TB2, and TB3. Oops, and the quote I should go around them. So all we have to do for the page panel then, and here we go, whoop, that value equals zero, because that's where it starts off. So then we just add, you know, page panel dot value. 0, 1, 2, 3. And that'll get us through each one of these views. And instead of hitting resume, let's actually hit stop. I I wish there was a stop button on the Zojo like there used to be. Oh, now I'm getting that stupid, goofy internet thing again. This thing has, uh, the thing. one thing about Zojo, it likes to be on the internet all the time for some reason to, I don't know, verify your user. Well, if, it, if you're not hooked to the internet exactly at that time, you get this really goofball dialogue that shows up. So you can see that you can switch between um, these really easily. So that's how you work uh, between Zojo and Live Code with uh, either cards or panels. And it works relatively uh, nice. I mean, you can do the same thing with group controls and container controls. But that's uh, basically how you would do it. Um, you have a lot more flexibility, obviously, with Zojo than you do with uh, Live Code. Thank you for watching.